dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs anatoma a series of e learning lectures on gross anatomy here we are covering the head and neck area today's topic is thyroid gland part 2 now we have covered a little bit of the thyroid introductory aspects in part 1 particularly the parts surfaces borders surface marking etc now we are going to cover the um other two major areas namely relations and blood supply it is this uh, video is accompanied at the end by a set of image based mcqs and an answer key once again reminding you of the color code there are two color codes script in black with a light gray background all those labels are must know items nice to know labels are scripted in white and the background is black now let's go straight to the relations remember this is a video number 2 it is a continuation of the previous video let's look at a clinical scenario a thyroid surgery is going on some condition for which intervention surgical intervention is required the surgeon uh, is uh, trying to isolate the recurrent laryngeal nerve watch my words carefully recurrent laryngeal nerve this nerve is easy to identify because it is uh, plastered in this groove between the trachea and the esophagus whatever it is in the process of identifying he is trying to isolate the nerve end to end so that it is not caught uh, while a, a procedure is being done on the thyroid maybe thyroidectomy or some thyroid partial removal whatever as he is doing watch carefully as he is doing the number of blood vessels in the immediate vicinity inadvertently it gets cut one vessel gets cut the question is he is in the close vicinity of the recurrent laryngeal nerve which artery has been cut now to understand this we need to understand the relations and the blood supply of the thyroid gland we will we'll get back to the answer uh, at the end of the video now the anterolateral surface although the gland is reasonably um, to the surface close to the surface the strap muscles cover the lobes anterolateral surface we have seen this in the previous video but let's recapitulate these are the strap muscles sternohyoid thyrohyoid sternothyroid and this one is not a strap muscle cricothyroid i must emphasize this is visible in this area so i have added it it's seen immediately above the isthmus uh it's attached to the cricoid cartilage so i have mentioned it it's more a intrinsic muscle of the larynx so except the cricothyroid all the others are um strap muscles next here is the left lateral view of the thyroid gland and its immediate structures you can see that the thyroid rests the isthmus is resting on the trachea 
covering roughly the third, fourth and the fifth tracheal rings. So the trachea itself is a posterior relation. Let me make a point here. The relations I'm, I am covering is not as uh, typical as given in a textbook. The focus here is every slide, whatever dissection material is seen, I am trying to identify as many relationship uh, relations uh, of this uh, gland as possible. Next, also immediately behind the lobe of the thyroid gland, immediately behind the lobes, is the common carotid artery. You can see the huge size of the artery. You can see that uh, at the level of the uh, thyroid cartilage, it divides into an external carotid and an internal carotid artery. Next, this is right side uh, lateral view. You can see the same common carotid on the right side. Next, more lateral to it, of course, this is a dissection. Uh, we have pushed the internal jugular laterally, uh, but in the uh, intact in C2 condition, the internal jugular is closely plastered to the uh, carotid or uh, to the carotid, and uh, it is also covered with the uh, carotid sheath. You can also notice that a third item is there within the carotid sheath, the vagus nerve. That means the common the carotid at its bifurcation that means the carotid the external carotid that one and the internal jugular and the vagus are the three contents within the carotid sheath next you can see the uh, external carotid and uh, more deeper is uh, the internal carotid that's the superior thyroid branch of the external carotid and in, in context, you, you can see the brachiocephalic trunk uh, uh, from which the uh, right common carotid and the subclavian, right subclavian uh, bifurcate. Uh, they come out as two branches. Next, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is very typically seen. I, I started this with the clinical case scenario. You can see very well seen the recurrent laryngeal nerve. You can also see the trachea and the esophagus. The esophagus, the brown muscle of the esophagus forms an excellent backdrop for identification of the um, recurrent laryngeal nerve. And that is the inferior thyroid artery. So therefore, these two, the inferior thyroid and the recurrent laryngeal, they are in close vicinity. More importantly, uh, in contrast to the superior thyroid, the inferior thyroid divides into several branches and these branches enter the uh, thyroid gland. As a result, as you trace the recurrent laryngeal nerve superiorly, the nerve gets entangled in a mesh of uh, branches of the uh, thyroid artery. You know, this is uh, important surgically and we will come to that a little later. Next, also notice that uh, behind all this is the scalenous anterior muscle, particularly running on the top of it is the uh, phrenic nerve. See, that's the phrenic nerve. Next, the external laryngeal is also seen um, uh, in the uh, upper part of this uh, photograph. Next, concentrate on that uh, dotted oval area the red white uh, dotted area from our previous discussion we know that's the inferior thyroid artery see the tortuosity that is one thing and second it has a lot of branches and these are the ones which reach the gland although in the dissection we have removed them you can also see that's the recurrent laryngeal nerve there next as i pointed out earlier the esophagus uh, forms an excellent brown backdrop to identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve. That's the brachiocephalic trunk. I repeat, that's the brachiocephalic trunk. Now, once the scalenous anterior is identified, we can also identify the cords of the brachial plexus. That means, you see, 
in the name of the uh, thyroid gland dissection and a discussion on its relations we are virtually covering all the structures in its vicinity although only a few are directly in immediate relation to the thyroid gland that's an advantage of having a dissection material uh, you know in a prosection uh, lecture next this is a um, uh, once again right anterolateral view you can see the cut section of the right common carotid artery now when you when you look at the branches dissect out the branches of the inferior thyroid on a more deeper plane when you clean up the structures you are going, you are likely to encounter another important uh, blood vessel namely the vertebral artery see the artery has been cut at its origin from the subclavian so i have kept the dot a little away from it so that you can see the uh, lumen very clearly that's the right vertebral artery and incidentally in this thing just to cover but has no direct relation to the thyroid gland that's the right intercostal artery similarly on the left side remember this is a left side lateral view correspondingly you can see the left vertebral artery the left costo cervical trunk and the stem of the left subclavian artery a short break to introduce you to my channel vbs anatoma it's a dissection based video in gross anatomy a series of video lectures next we take up another interesting very important area of discussion blood supply and nerve supply of the thyroid gland more importantly the blood supply we are recapitulating because we have already identified these items the superior thyroid uh, branch of the external carotid incidentally it's the first branch descends down and it can always be identified reaching the uh, lobes Uh, corresponding lobes exactly at the upper tip or the apex of the thyroid lobe now this is very important i will will come back to it a little later what's the dotted area on the opposite on the other end that's as already pointed out inferior thyroid artery and we have already introduced the close relationship of the recurrent laryngeal nerve in this uh, uh, with the branches of the internal in, inferior thyroid artery next you see there is possibly sometimes a third uh, blood supply directly coming from the aorta or the brachiocephalic trunk is the thyroid or ema artery is a rare rare additional blood supply next we saw the internal jugular vein which again re identifying it uh, the reason is venous drainage has to be covered for which the internal jugular is the principal vein or to which the blood drains uh, in contrast to the arteries there are three veins superior middle and inferior uh, thyroid veins uh, either going to the internal jugular or uh, at the most uh, to the further um, Uh, draining vein and maybe the brachiocephalic uh, at the most next again let's uh, talk about uh, uh, this uh, blood supply i i have mentioned already the superior and the inferior thyroid artery while a single superior thyroid artery reaches the upper pole of the thyroid lobe multiple branches of the inferior thyroid reach the lower pole this contrast is very interesting because these branches in these branches is intertwine the recurrent laryngeal nerve therefore therefore in the event that you need to remove the thyroid gland it is much easier to handle the superior thyroid artery because it can be clamped as it enters the upper pole of the thyroid gland because at that point it is reasonably away from the external laryngeal nerve however on the opposite side well you can isolate the recurrent from below upwards no doubt but then should you need to 
uh, clamp the artery, try to clamp the stem of the inferior thyroid artery as low as possible. See, whereas in the, in the superior thyroid it is at the pole, at the apex. But here you go as far away from the lower pole, clamp the inferior thyroid artery and uh, uh, of course uh, make sure that the recurrent laryngeal nerve is uh, isolated and preserved. Now this is most important uh, point you have to understand in its uh, surgical anatomy. Next. Another interesting thing, remember this is the posterior border that is being shown here. Another interesting thing is the parathyroids are located along the posterior border and both the parathyroids are have a branch coming from the inferior thyroid uh, artery or one of its branches. So the surgeon invariably makes sure that during thyroidectomy the parathyroid glands are spare. And for that the corresponding uh, blood supply should also be retained. Now that is the most important point I want you to take home in this discussion. Next, we will move on to the image based MCQs. MCQ number one, identify the pointed structure. There is something that's being pointed out there. What is that structure? There are four choices. Think over and come to a conclusion. What is the structure? I can give you a few clues. Here is the right lateral view of the neck region, thyroid and its, and the deep relations of the neck, deep structures of the neck. MCQ number two, again, I am saying another point of structure. What is it? And there are some options. Uh, same photograph, right lateral view. Third MCQ, again some other structure has been uh, pointed out, a, a, a third structure. Watch carefully where it is in relation to the thyroid gland. Come to your conclusion. There is an answer key at the end. Now here, there is one more structure being pointed out. From the list given, it looks like all are all the choices are arteries. So we can as well say which artery is this. You can think of which artery it is. Next MCQ. This is the last MCQ. This view, I can give you a clue, is the left lateral view of the thyroid gland and the other structures uh, in its immediate vicinity. And also the, the deep dissection of the neck is also there in this. Uh, Interestingly, you can see the apex of the lung also in this photograph, although it has no relevance to the discussion. Well, if you finish the MCQs, these are the answer keys. Go through it and you can uh, freeze the video at this stage and recheck your answers. Now, dear friends, that was a short discussion on two aspects of the thyroid gland. In this video, thyroid part 2, we have covered the relations of the thyroid gland as seen on an actual dissection material. I have moved away from a conventional textbook based approach primarily because the focus is on what is clearly seen in this dissection. There, I am sure you will have some doubts and if you would like to get some, add some feedback to this video that will help me improve. You can write to me on this uh, uh, address, email, or you can even write it. Um, you can add your comments in the blog area below the YouTube video. Thank you for your patience, um, patient uh, listening, and I hope you have benefited from this lecture. Thank you.